Hello, welcome to another devlog. Um, before I get started, this one is going to be a long one, I can tell. Um, I It's in my nature to like make these things way too long and uh, I try and fight against it and I don't want to make really long ones. I want to be able to condense my thoughts succinctly. Um, but I'm not going to be able to do that that for this one. So apologies that it's going to be so long. Uh, just don't watch it maybe. Like, that's fine. Um, the reason it's going to be so long is I'm going to talk about a new project and some other stuff. Stuff, 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 stuff. So the last two devlogs were both about the game jam, the um, class skills game jam that I was doing. And you may have noticed that things got awfully quiet about all of that. What happened was that um, a third of the way into the jam I got really super sick and didn't do any work on it for a week and so I still had some time left after that but looking at it just decided it, it wasn't it wasn't worth going back to. Um, so I abandoned that and didn't didn't finish a game for the jam. Which is a shame, it's the first jam that I started taking part in and didn't get a game done. Um, but that's okay. Um, I don't know if I'll go back to that project. Uh, I might, like, I had some nice ideas for it. Um, it turned out to be more work than I hoped it was going to be. Uh, as all of these projects do, but there was a lot of like really fiddly work that I was finding really quite difficult for that one. And um, I was really fighting scope. I felt like it needed a lot in there for it to be interesting, but I wasn't going to have time to put a lot in there. So I don't know. Uh, I, I haven't I haven't looked uh, looked back at it since deciding to stop. So. Uh, that's, that's to one side. Um, so since then I've been working on this, uh, other project, which has been in the back of my head for a really long time. Um, and I kept like thinking, thinking about it again and again, even while I was supposed to be doing other stuff. And... Um, I can't remember if I've made a devlog about this before. I might have done, in which case I'll probably be repeating myself. I, I definitely recorded a devlog uh, about this at a really early stage, and I don't think that I uploaded it, but I might have done. So anyway, this is a game which is currently untitled, and it's sort of about uh, desktop emulation slash hacking game, um, inspired by the likes of um, Hacknet recently, and um, a game which I've totally forgotten uh, the name of. The first introversion game, um, uh, I've forgotten the name of it, but it's a, it's, a, it's a hacking game where you connect computers and break the passwords and steal the data, transfer money from out of banks, all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's like one half of my inspiration. And the other half of my inspiration is um, seeing quite a lot of what I, what I think of as desktop emulators. I don't know if that's like really what we call them. Desktop simulators maybe uh, might be better where like you, the game is inside a, um, inside a, a fake operating system where you have applications and files and things. I've played a few of these recently. I'm not going to be able to remember the names of any of them because I'm bad at all that kind of stuff. Um, but something that like a lot of them, I, I feel like they've been a, uh, a bunch of them recently, all um, all of them that I have seen 
are tapping into a kind of nostalgia for, I guess, early to mid or maybe early to late even 90s computing, home computing, where like they are emulating sometimes early Windows, Windows, I guess 3.1 or something, or Mac OS. I don't know. I don't know the numbers of uh, the, the names really of the different Mac OSs, but they're emulating that kind of style of operating system or even moving into like the Windows 95, Windows XP era. Um, and so a lot of them feel deliberately retro and deliberately nostalgic and that's fine. But you know, I don't kind of don't identify with that. I used to computer in those, those periods. I grew up during the nineties, but I don't feel like uh, uh, a yearning for Windows 3.1 or anything like that. So I sort of wanted to make um, a desktop simulator in a more of my aesthetic and like maybe sort of correct <laughs> what I see as wrong with with operating systems in the sense that because like it's in a game and people aren't trying to use it to do their job you can like control what features exist and what don't and you can um, maybe make something neater more tidy than a real operating system is anyway I'm going to show you uh, what I've got so far it's like It's at a stage where I've built a bunch of the building blocks that are going to go into making the game, but there is no actual game there yet. And everything I'm going to show you is half finished. So those are the caveats. But I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where I am in this project. Um, let's fire this up. What you're going to see uh, when I start this is the... Um, hopefully, if everything works, is like the, the beginning of the game as you would see it when you first run it. And that's kind of significant. So let's first go there. Okay, so this is my like fake boot screen. Um, and this is the logon screen. So what we just saw, the booting thing, is gonna be significant, I think. Like, it's introducing you to the idea that this is a computer, this is an operating system. Um, but also, a lot of the, um, the text in there is gonna be sort of maybe part of the where the game is structured. I'll talk more about that later. But anyway, so what we just saw was not just random text stuff going on there. This is the log on screen. And um, this is what you're gonna see the first time you run the game. Uh, not with this picture, because this is just my normal profile picture that I use. Um, but yeah, this is like, this is it. Uh, incidentally, uh, I want to hide lots of little details and things there. I want to make like a fairly smooth, swish, modern, uh, sort of mobile influenced uh, interface, but with sort of hidden things in the background now. So actually what this is, this is kind of a summary of what was going on in the, in the, in the boot screen. And again, like, there's going to be information in here that's going to be useful. What you see here is going to change as the game goes on. I'm not like 100% clear on all of the details of how that's going to work, but anyway. So, this is what happens when you choose the user. Um, ask for a password. If I type in any other thing, it'll fail. And this 
is not implemented yet. But this is like the um, this is the lead into the game, right? You've you've got a login screen with a user, and you click on it, and it asks for a password, and you don't know the password. You type password or whatever, it doesn't work, and you click this button and it takes you into a password recovery process. And the password recovery process is a simplified version of much of what you do later in the game. It is the tutorial. And so that's, that's that. Um, but oh, the nice thing about that is you can just skip it if you've played it before and if you know what the password is, like I do. So let's load in. This is the operating system. Now, the, um, the little loading symbol that we saw just there is not final. I don't like it. Uh, one of the things I've been struggling with is loading graphics. I've gone through a bunch of iterations of what that could be, and I'm not happy with any of them. So, more, more work to be done there. So we have skipped the tutorial and we've moved into like the first section of the game and this is what you see with your um, the operating system. It's like simplish. We've got a bar on the side and we've got some files. And what I was initially thinking was like there would be no applications as such. There are just files. So this is a text file. If I open it, I get the text file opening up uh, inside uh, a window and um, that's all you ever see. You see a text file and you open it. There's no, um, you never have to launch a program because, fi because you know, I'm controlling all of this. So you don't need to have multiple options for opening the same thing. I sort of changed my mind a little bit about that and there kind of maybe will be some um, dedicated application to things that you launch. But anyway, um, that's the idea, right? Like, uh, here's a file, let's open it, and here's the thing. I'm gonna design a whole bunch of applications. At the moment, there are eight plans. There might be more than that, or maybe even one less, because one of them I'm not sure about. But, um, yeah, a lot of the game is gonna be navigating file systems, opening files up, and doing stuff in them. Oh. This is a very bare bones text reader where basically all you can do is you can change the size of the text. <coughs> but, you know, I can, I can open multiple of them with different texts in and right, that's the kind of thing. Um, this button here, I'll, I'll try and remember to talk about later. It doesn't do anything yet, but there's stuff there. So that's uh, that's that. One of the things that I want to be able to do is like uh, do customization of the interface. So there's at the moment there's a couple of little options down here. You can change the background. At the moment I haven't like designed any nice background. I've got three here, and this is just horrible. But um, you know there are different backgrounds, and like one of the one of the ways that progress will be rewarded through the game is with more customization options. So you will, as you go through, discover more possibilities for backgrounds and more like music tracks that can play in the background, that kind of thing. Um, and I've got something fun planned with backgrounds, which I haven't haven't done yet, but uh, should be interesting. And then we've got like a bunch of color themes that you can, you can change the 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 color of all of the stuff and you know all of the, the buttons and things change um, this is like essentially a color theme consists of these four colors you've got a dark and a light color which one goes on top of the other and I use that for text on backgrounds and buttons and all that kind of stuff and then there is a darker color, which is at the moment only used for the, the shadows under the windows. But, oh, and a couple of uh, buttons use it on like a, uh, a press. And then finally, uh, a sort of a contrasting highlight color, 
which is going to be used very sparingly. Uh, there's just a little bit on the screen here to like really guide the player. The highlight color is going to be used to show you like where you should be heading, what, what you should be clicking on. Um, I think that's, that's kind of quite important. Um, so yeah, I haven't like tuned all of these yet and um, certainly some of them are better than others. Uh, I'm going to head back to this one because that's kind of what I've been working in mostly. Um, so what else is going on here? This sidebar is not going to be where the applications you launch live. I am planning on having a kind of an alt tab type cycling through open programs. Or maybe, uh, you know, the sort of zooming out and sticking the ball in a grid. I don't know. There'll be some form of going through open, open windows, open programs. I'm not sure what yet. This is more like a space where I can show you statuses and information and stuff. There is like a little application here, which is for writing notes. And at the moment, they just kind of appear. And here we've got a note. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit more sophisticated, like each note is going to have a, have its own color tagging. And actually color tagging is going to be kind of an important aspect of the, like, the game as a whole. You can see these files on the desktop, some of them have little color tags on them. And I'm going to use that as a system of like organization and of hinting and, but also that you as a player can use it to help yourself out by by identifying stuff. Um, so yeah, at the moment this is just like a little, uh, just like keep writing notes. And there's no, there will be indication here on the bar of like what color a thing is, is tagged. There isn't yet. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of like little tiny application thing that I think is gonna be cool. There'll be another couple in here. This is the system time, which at the moment is running at a grossly accelerated rate because I'm testing some stuff and I need to like see how uh, time affects other things in the game. It's not, uh, I don't, I haven't decided how fast time will run in the game. I was initially just planning on having it run at real time, in real time, um, but that'll like, that affects some stuff, so probably not. Uh, it's certainly not going to run this fast. At the moment, it's running like at about a minute every every th 300 milliseconds or something like that. And it's too fast. That's fine. Um, I guess... Oh, also, another thing. I haven't yet uh, sort, done window sorting. So things just sort of get stuck behind other things. That's... There's many things to do in this game. I haven't done that yet. Um, so these buttons in the middle, the, the middle one I haven't done anything and that's important, but I'm not gonna talk about it in this video. The other ones are um, for launching apps. So um, I said before that like I was initially planning on just it being about files and you open a file and it automatically go. I have changed my mind there in that I think there are gonna be a few basic applications that you'll want to come back to. Um, uh, this one is like a contact list where you can go and see all of the all of your contacts and that's going to be important because you're going to use that to find some information about people and also to talk to them. You can you can like chat, you can launch a chat window with a person from the contact list and maybe some other things. Um, this I'm going to show you in a sec. This is going to be the music player and this I don't know yet. So anyway, this is one thing I've been, have been working on, which is a sort of a fake. Oh, look, it's, uh, it's broken. Um, so yeah, this is going to go crazy because of the, the speed that time is running at. Um, but this is like, a wow, it's going really crazy. Um, I'm not sure if it's going really crazy because of a bug or yeah, it shouldn't be spawning quite that fast. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Oh, I know, I know, I know. 
Um, anyway, this is like a Twitter clone, a sort of a fake social network sort of thing, which um, it's mo going so far to that fast that this is really hard to see, I think, and it'll just keep scrolling up. So um, I'm going to actually move it because it's distracting. Well, hmm, we might as well. Um, one of the things that um, I want to do is I want to set this game in the future in a kind of very specific culture, society, and set of circumstances. And these are going to be significant to the plot of the game. And, but also in the background, like there is a narrative to this game and um, that's going to be important. But most of what you do is not going to be directly connected to the narrative. Most of what you do is solving puzzles, hacking systems, and so on. So this is sort of a window into the world around you where um, at least in my current plans you none of the stuff in here is going to be useful for solving puzzles or doing what you want to do but um, it is gonna like let you know what's going on around you in the world and at the moment it's it's fairly simplistic um, these are just a bunch of people sending their statuses into the void. And at the moment, it just like, every time a status gets sent, it gets spawned into this list and it pushes the thing down. There's just this one big list of statuses. We can't see all of them because I, I remove them from the end of the list. Otherwise it really affects performance. Um, but yeah, so like the... At the beginning, at the moment, at the beginning, uh, the game generates this group of, I think, 100 people. And all of these people have some properties. They have interests. They have, like, hobbies. And they have a, what I call a verbosity, like a propensity to talk about the things they're interested in. And they also have a schedule. Like, they are day people or night people. They, they have, like, a period when they're asleep and a period when they're awake. And this, uh, this social network, it goes through and like every, every hour, it looks at all of these people and based on how likely they are to talk about stuff, they might send a, send a message. And um, the messages that they sent are going to be about one of three things. They're either going to be kind of about general life. They'll be about the food that they ate or the fact that they got up too early, sort of everyday stuff. Or they're going to be about an event which is happening in the world. And there are going to be sort of, I guess, daily events set which different uh, people can write messages about. So there will be a sense of sort of community there that people are writing messages about the same thing and then the third thing that they'll write about is the stuff that they're into the music that they like the the hobbies that they have and so on right now you can see if you can see that a bunch of these are are nothing messages like this is a message about a place like i haven't written all the systems about that and the, uh, so far i've only put like three interests into this right now they can tell you about books here you go it's a really lovely story it really immerses you um, they can write about uh, knitting. I've got loads of hand-dyed wool going spare here. And they can write about uh, noise music. Uh, I've been nearly destroyed by six hours of rich nerve-pinching noise. So the idea is that they will randomly generate tweets where they write about um, yeah, the stuff that they're into, the stuff that's going on in the world, and just like everyday life. And... Um, so right now it's a pretty dumb system. Like they don't do any replying and I definitely want to get um, them to start replying to each other. Um, especially about the events and things. But also, you know, if somebody on here is writing about the new album that's cool, somebody else who likes the same kind of music is going to reply to them and say something. That's going to happen. And then secondly, at the moment, it's this big dumb uh, single list which builds up and up and up. 
as the as time goes on. And that's it's just kind of stupid. I'm gonna like divide it into a bunch of sort of like um instances, I guess, a bit like Mastodon where you have different, I guess, like servers and some of those are themed around something. You're gonna be able to select which ones you see, which ones you want to see and so people who have interest will post into the music server but also there'll be like a local component as well where there'll be like different geographical or maybe like virtually geographical communities which these random people are are tweeting into and like i say this isn't like directly about the the gameplay and the puzzle solving but it is going to build the world, and I am going to take people from the story and people who you interact with as part of the game and put them into this as well. So you're going to be able to find out what book that guy that you just got really angry with on, uh, on a chat message, what book they're reading, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I, like this is this is one of the systems that's that's going to be up there. Um, yeah, there's loads more to do here. Like there's a got to think of a bunch of um, interests and things. Work out exactly how the different um, instances work. Um, have a slightly less stupid way of just like spitting them all out. At the moment. There's not a lot of variety of um, profile pictures, like it's either a robot or it's a smudge of colour. There's going to be a lot more of different sort of possibilities there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one of those things. Um, what else? Oh, okay, so there's like um, up here in the top left corner underneath the, um, the clock. This space I'm going to use for kind of important communication to the player. At the moment it doesn't really work like properly, but um, how do I how do I do that? If you take a look, I've got a little test button here where I can spawn notifications up here. And um, at the moment there is nothing to like really draw your attention to the fact there's a notification. When I do a new one it just pops in. There will be some flashing lights and music and big arrows pointing or something to let you know you've got one of these things. And um, yeah, these are just like ways that I can communicate to the player basically. They will mostly come from applications or bits of the computer system that want to talk to you. And then gonna let you know that there's a problem with the file system and you've got to like go and solve it or they're going to let you know that somebody wants to talk to you. There's a, there's an email waiting for you or whatever. So this notification system is sort of a prime way that I, as the designer, I'm going to communicate to somebody playing. And I'm sort of want to divide this thing into sex logical sections where in the middle, these are the applications that you're going to launch. At the bottom, this is stuff for you to customize things. You make your notes, you, you change your settings and things down the bottom. And then up at the top, this is all about giving you with information. This is the this is the time, these are the notifications. There's gonna be another thing here which is gonna be providing you with information about like the the system and your activity on it. That kind of thing. Um, so let's get that back down there. So there's one other thing that is in here, which is this. And this is the the command line, the the system console, the terminal window. Um, so I can't remember if um, the introversion game, which I currently don't remember the name of, had one of these in it. It might have done, it might not. Certainly Hacknet does, but then there's other games which uh, I'm thinking about like... Um, Quadrilateral Cowboy. Quadrilateral Cowboy is really all about uh, using a, a terminal window to solve puzzles by like 
programming object in your environment. And the really cool thing about that is that you sort of, everything you type has direct physical effects in the real world. You know, you are switching laser grids off opening doors and all on sort of timing systems. And so that's definitely an influence on my thinking here. Um, so th this is not going to be a full system console where you can you can do everything in. I want to keep it more restricted to that, partly because um, like I don't want to have too many commands and controls and things going on in this console. And I I I um, I think it's cool and fun to like pretend you're a hacker and type commands in and uh, break passwords by typing codes and stuff like I think there is a there is a something enticing about that but on the other hand I find that I forget all of the controls that you're supposed to use even like quadrilateral cowboy is not of like it doesn't have an enormous number of options there but I always forget how you're supposed to type in the, the like when you, you type in a control to move your your rifle, uh, your suitcase gun. Like I can't remember how you put the coordinates in, and every time I have to like go and look at the. So like, I, I want it to be exactly the right level of complexity where it feels like you're learning cool commands which have effects but you're not bogged down in the possibilities so I'll demonstrate a little bit uh, how it's going to work so I am connected to a network uh, in the real game like there will be a process to get connected to that thing it won't just connect you I can scan the network and it'll show me the devices that are on it there are three devices on this network in fact I should so I type help help tells you um, all of the commands that are currently available to you. So um, at the moment I can scan, I can connect and I can get info. There are only three things that I can do and I want to keep it like fairly restricted so that there's never an infinite number of options to you. Um, although I've, I've only start, just started building this. It's already too complicated and I need to uh, simplify it a bit because if I type connect, um, I have to, okay, so right here, I have to type the name of the device as displayed in the list. And this is stupid because I give them, I give them ridiculous names that don't mean anything. And then you have to like detect if that's an L or a one and no, so this at the moment doesn't work, but you're gonna be able to connect just by typing the device number. Of course, like you should just type connect one and it'll connect to device number one. So that's the first way that it's uh, too complicated. The second is uh, right now you connect to a device. Okay, you're connecting to this device at this address, you are connected. Um, Oh, I haven't like I haven't done all of the like the code which um, which clears the box and keeps focus on it and that kind of stuff. But that's all to come. Like I say, early days, many many things going on. Um, so yeah, at the moment you connect to a thing, and now if I type help now, it'll tell me that. I've only got two options, access and info. I can get information about the device or I can access it. And I uh, I need to simplify this. At the moment you have to connect to a device and that's like, there's no restriction on that. Connect to a device is just like plugging into it. And then actually being able to use the device requires you to get access to it, which might require a password or something. And I think it's a step of complexity that's not necessary. You don't need to like, connect to a thing and then access the thing. It should be one, one stage. Um, uh, I think that info is broken. Yeah, info is broken. So info will give you some information about the device that you're currently connected to, except that right now it doesn't. Right now it gives you information to, by default, the network 
or if you type the name of the device, it'll give you information about the device you're connected to. That's another like little fix that needs to be done. Um, but uh, okay, so th this is kind of early days, and um, I don't know exactly how much of the game is going to take place in this console. Not, not like fifty percent of the game. I don't know, less than that. Um, so we'll see. I'm going to build some other stuff and see how that goes before coming back to this and like really looking at it. Um, Secondly, like, um, I've built, I hope, quite a robust system for, like, passing these commands and for defining commands and, like, the help system here is all built in. Like, you can always, you can always type help and any command and it'll tell you about it. So, um, this, this, like, command console thing like works pretty well and it's sort of a case now of defining like how how are the commands actually set up like what is the sequence of actions that you have to take and then integrating all of this with like the the password breaking and stuff uh like i said it's a long video it's gonna go longer there's more to talk about with it i'm gonna talk about passwords and stuff and like what the game actually is in a while. Um, anyway, where was I? Oh yes, yeah, so info about the device. Um, I've got a name and a manufacturer here. A description, it's an intelligent low energy bread warming device. So it's a toaster, it's like a smart toaster. Um, got an address, importantly here it's got an access protocol. We're gonna use that. And like sometimes dates and things are gonna be useful up times. Like there, are, these are gonna be like Sometimes you're going to have to fish bits of information out of these things and sometimes not. Um, if I type how access, oh, I don't know how to spell access. It's going to tell me access plus API name. Attempt to gain access to the currently connected device using the specified API. So I need to know the API. Here I've got this access protocol. So let's try that. Um, access. XPC and lo and behold it's worked. Accessing the device, enter the pin number. And that's as far as I've gotten this. Uh, so far I haven't allowed you to actually get access to the device. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what this game actually is. Um, at the moment I foresee that there are kind of At its heart, this game is going to be a puzzle game where you um, you yeah. How do I define exactly how it is? Um, there are like two avenues that you're going to try and progress in in the game. Number one is this computer that you're using is not your computer. You've acquired it, and so at the very beginning, you start up, switch it on, and you try and log on, and you don't know the password. And you have to go through this tutorial section to get the password, right? And um, the way the computer is set up is that it's sort of got these layers of security inside it where to access the most important, interesting files and things in there, you've got to go through layers of security measures. So... The like the the arc of progression in the game is getting to the bottom of this these layers of of security, and you are trying to find out information about the person who owns this computer. Um, at the other at the same time that you're doing that, you are trying to gain access to external networks, external data storage sites which also have stuff that you need there is a sort of a conspiracy or at least a, a plot between the owner of this computer and other people and you've got to establish where the connections lie and sort of get somewhere um 
So how you're going to do that principally is by um, connecting to networks, hacking devices on those networks, retrieving data from storage devices on those networks. But also there's going to be a whole bunch of like, I guess, kind of manipulating people into believing that you are the owner of this computer or doing something for you, granting access to something or something, something, something. A lot of the game is going to boil down to getting passwords. Here I'm trying to access this toaster. I don't know why I'm trying to access this toaster, but I need a four-digit pin to do that. At the very beginning of the game, um, and there's going to be like a progression of complexity of these things that will ramp up. At the very beginning, you're going to get these like four-digit pin and simple password devices where like you ha will have some software on your computer which will just like brute force crack these things. I, um, you know, this wants four numbers and it doesn't have any kind of limit on the number of attempts you can make. So you just run your little uh, script which runs through all the permutations of the numbers and you'll get access. Um, that's at the beginning. And then as time goes on, the security protections are going to ramp up and the techniques that you're going to have to use to get these passwords are going to get more and more complicated, more and more puzzly. I want to have a bunch of this, which is not like, so this is Hollywood hacking really, isn't it? It's like, you know, cracking the password, uh, running the script um, and I want to have visually interesting things which sort of emulate some of that Hollywood hacking kind of style of thing but I also want to do a bunch of the sort of the social engineering side of hacking the um, you know um, manipulating people into giving you access to their networks or um, finding Finding out that the kids, uh, the, the person's daughter is super important to them and you work out what the daughter's birthday is and the password is the daughter's birthday. Like, still kind of Hollywoody stuff, but slightly more interesting. And um, so you are going to be getting those passwords by having text chats with people and looking in files and finding information in text files and things. And also there's going to be a bunch of, I think, sort of like pseudo cryptography stuff. So one of the things that I want to do is like in these, in these text files, um, there will be information hidden, right? And maybe there's some sort of simple cipher going on here. Um, there isn't in this one but there could be. And so this little button here, which doesn't do anything at the moment, is gonna be sort of a, I think several different applications are gonna have a button like this. It's gonna be like a run a script on this file. So you can, you can see if like every nth character spells out a message. You can apply, uh, you can divide it into five, five letter group sections and stick a grid over the top of it and like there's gonna be I hope a bunch of sort of little cryptography techniques and things that you can use to sort of extract information for these stuff and end up getting access to things. The I'm gonna like I've sort of reached the limit of what I can show you actually in this uh in this uh game because what I've shown you is pretty much everything that there is. So I will, I'm going to show you my, um, like my mock-up, my design document. This is done in Inkscape and um, Inkscape is a bit of software that I really love. It's, uh, it's open source. It's like a vector drawing program. It's a little bit like shoddy on the performance. So you're going to see a bunch of tearing and it might run a bit slow because this document has too many, too many objects in it. Oh. So sorry about that. Um, but this is my incredibly disorganized, um, uh, well, it starts out as a wireframing document, 
and it ends up into like me doing all of the graphic design in it. So this is my this is my desktop and these are my mockups for the applications. You can see the text reader which we were just looking at is pretty much as it's mocked up here. Everything gets designed in here before I, I put it into Unity. And I do a lot of iteration in here. So for example, the first app that I designed is not currently, is not in the game yet, but it's this um, chat program, text chat, uh, instant messaging kind of thing. And you can see the iterations I do. So this is my very, no, that's not my very first design. I think I might have deleted the first one because it was so terrible. Yeah, yeah, I did. So anyway, this is the second design. It's two bare bones. This is the third one. I'm starting to move towards it. I've decided on having this bottom bar. You're going to be able to resize applications vertically, but not horizontally. Um, this is what the title bar is going to look at. I haven't worked out what the close button's going to look like yet, but this is sort of it. And then this is the next one. I've worked out this. I've got a bit more distinction between boxes and things. I've worked out maybe what I'm doing with the color highlighting, uh, but the buttons at the bottom haven't been designed yet. And then this here is my current final design of that. This may still change because I haven't actually built it into the game yet, but um, this is gonna be where you do quite a lot of communication with people and you see what they write, you get to choose options. I'm not gonna let you type everything you, you say, you, you choose from options to do, to do dialogues. So that's, that's what this document is, it's iterating on all these things. Um, so I can show you, for example, this is like the, oh, I didn't show you this in game. Um, this is like the contact list. I'm calling it a Rolodex at the moment. I have to go and check if that's, like a trademark or something, probably is, right? Uh, and it functions really quite a lot like a Rolodex that you you have the alphabet displayed here, only the letters that you actually have contact with. You click on a letter and you see all of the contacts starting with that letter. You click on a contact to view a information card about them. I'm already decided to simplify this a bit. Like I'm not, I was initially gonna have names and also handles um, and you use the handle to actually access a, access a, a chat, a direct communication with that person and sometimes you might have to like divine the handle from the name but I've decided against that. In the end people are not going to have both. People are going to have a handle which is also their name and that's um, that's that. Secondly I do not know yet if I'm going to use locations and phone numbers. I might. Uh, I have ideas about them, but they're they're in very early stages, so maybe we don't use them. And then here's like a little storage where we're going to learn people's passwords and things. And once you learn them, they're going to be kept here, so you'll have a you'll have a place to to go and find them. Um, so yeah, here you can see like a bit of iteration. Sometimes the iteration process is long. This is me thinking about what you do when you log on and starting out with a very simple box, trying to make it more complicated and work out what works and what doesn't. I think I was working on this before I had even finalized what the chat window was gonna look like. So I'm still working out like, what do I do with angles? Uh, do I have curvy corners and that kind of stuff? So I go through all of these. It gets more curvy. This button is gonna be curved, or maybe with diamonds. Finally, this is like, I think the first time I hit on the flat at one end, curved at another end button thing, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna use. Um, but I'm still not, this is like the closest I get to uh, a full design before I actually try and build it. And then when I actually try and build it, I, I mock it up more properly. Uh, here. So this is the this is the mock-up for the login. Um, what else? Oh yes, this is important. So
here we come into like, how much am I going to allow you to sort of access the real world and how much time are you going to spend inside the command console? Um, I think that a lot of the game is going to be about sort of actually looking at 3D spaces. Again, I haven't built any of this yet, so we'll see. This is my idea for like a, a device control system. When you hack a device on a network, sometimes, often, it'll connect you to this thing and you will be able to look through its eyes. I think that most devices will have some kind of camera, not necessarily mobile, but most will. And do something with them, like maybe not very much, but um, maybe you connect to a coffee machine and you can cause the coffee machine to dispense coffee when there's no cup there and thereby like distract someone in the room. I don't know about that because I don't know if there are going to be people in these spaces. Like it would be cool if there were, but that's probably ramping up the complexity of this game to a level beyond what I want to, uh, I want to tackle. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there's going to be people in the world or not. But in this one, you have control of a camera and you can move around and you can see things in this, in this world. And this is going to interface with the, the command console. Like this. Like, initially, I was thinking that what you do is you... You find, like, a link to a camera, to a security camera or something, and you, you double-click on it, and you connect to the camera, and you search through, and this camera, like, does some detection of devices, and you spot that, ah, here's a, here's a device, and you click on it, or you press the button to to capture it and then the console opens up and you do your like hacking -y stuff in there to connect to it and then like we go back to this one and now the control is switched over to the new device and I think that I am going to do some of that but I, again I got to like I got to iterate on this a bit I think to work out exactly what the like the loop is for play um, but it, this is going to be a significant part of the game and it's probably going to be what I'm going to work on implementing next. Uh, yeah, there's a bunch of other mock-ups that I haven't worked on. Here's a... I haven't... I've worked on, but I haven't implemented. This is going to be a music player. Um, assuming that I can work out how to do this kind of visualisation. I don't know. I don't know how to do it yet. We'll see. And uh, what else? Oh, a big one. Yes, a big one. Um, I don't know exactly how the file system is going to work in this game. Um, eventually, by the end of the game, you're going to have access to a lot of files. I mean, a lot, like a hundred, two hundred. Uh, not thousands or anything. I'm going to have a bunch of files. And something that... Um, some that I experience with Hacknet, for example, is that I just end up with this... In, in Hacknet, you, you break into systems and you copy files from them onto your own computer, often to then, like, give to a client. And I would find that I ended up with just like this hard drive full of junk. So in this game also, you will by the end have a hard drive full of junk. But there's going to be gold in amongst the junk, isn't there? There's going to be the document that you need to find out where this person was on a certain date or what their mother's maiden name is so that you can crack their password. And so it's going to be, end up being important, like how you, uh, how you deal with files. And this is sort of my mock up for what's going to happen. I want to have a non hierarchical file system 
um, for a few reasons, which I'm not going to go into. Um, but also just because I think it would be cool to experiment. Like I remember thinking around about 2006 or 2007 that um, non-hierarchical file systems were the way forward and we going to stop like putting things in folders. We're just going to tag stuff. And it turns out that that's not true, except I think that it is probably true for people who deal with enormous, enormous amounts of files. Um, uh, I guess people doing like big data stuff don't put all their things in folders. I don't know. I don't, I don't actually have any experience of that. I've been reading a bit about non-hierarchical file systems, but I uh, haven't actually, I don't really know about them. Um, so I want to have that. So you're going to have files. They're not going to be in folders. They're all going to be together in a big thing. So that means that we need like kind of sophisticated sorting and filtering systems. Um, and, and maybe to be honest, at the moment, this is a little bit beyond my my like programming skills. I don't really have any experience dealing with databases and I don't really know how you do complex filtering of stuff. Um, like I'm about at the level where I can get an item out of a list because I know how old it is, you know, by, by sort of identifying that. Like I'm not a great programmer and I'm not, very knowledgeable about, about this stuff. So we'll see how much of this uh, I feel like I, I can implement. But um, my idea is that this is your file browser. It shows all of the files on your system. You have a set of things that you can organize by, them by, and I'm gonna limit it to not an enormous number. Like they are all going to be things which uh, are important, which are gonna help you solve puzzles and which are like useful for playing the game. And I'm also gonna not allow extreme granularity. So for example, there is a date on files, but I'm not gonna make you like look for the file that was created on April the 17th of 2033. I'm not gonna make you figure out that um, this file was created five years ago, but was modified last month. I'm gonna reduce the number of options there. So they have a date, but it's just one date. It's just the date of creation. I'm not gonna worry about when it was last modified. And it is just, it's all relative, you know? They are new or they are old or they're in between. They're like a, a few different things. Similarly for the for the size of files, I'm not gonna like calculate the size of every file. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna tell you if the file size is average for its type or it's bigger than expected or smaller than expected. And this is gonna be like always a clue. If a file is bigger than it should be, it's because some data has been hidden in there. Um, if it's smaller than it should be, it's because it's not really what it seems. Like it's pretending to be a picture and it's actually uh, text, something like that. So uh, I'm gonna have these things, which sort of, which real operating systems have, which real file systems use. And you, you probably, if you use a computer, you use every day to like find stuff, but I'm gonna simplify them down into things which are only useful. I forgot this conversation of caretaker. I don't know if it's gonna stay like that. It's the author of the file or whoever is currently maintaining it, which is gonna be significant. And then finally, this tag section. And this produces the most complexity because all of these things like you can sort a list by a property and like, or you can exclude everything that has a particular value. Uh, tags is a little different because a file can have sort of an arbitrary number of tags. You can have tags of different types and that kind of thing. Um, I've been thinking about it and I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna do this. Like I think a problem with tags in the real world is that 
it's very hard to get a person to be consistent about the tags that they use. Like I, I myself tag stuff and I forget whether I pluralize tags or not. So, uh, you know, is this a recipe or is it recipes? And I, over the course of my tagging history, I've used both. That's like an example. So you end up with messy tags. Um, but I don't need to worry about this because I'm not going to make the player tag anything. All of the tags are going to be what I decide they should be. And um, they can all be useful. Like I'm only going to tag stuffs in ways that's going to help you play the game. So for example, I'm going to have a bunch of tags. Uh, I'm going to group the tags into sections. One type of tag is going to be like basically code for useless. This is going to be things like um, pictures which you can use as your desktop background or music tracks that you can add to your music player and have playing in the, as the background music. They are never going to be used to solve a puzzle. So if you exclude all of those tags from the from your view you simplify things uh, and then the other ones like I don't know it's complicated it's not really worth going into and I'm still thinking about it but the idea here would be that this tag column will allow you to sort it by tags but over here you have a have a panel a box which displays all of the tags and you can selectively switch them on and off I want for all of these things and I haven't like a hundred percent honed down exactly how it will work but um, this is sort of like the um, this is the the tool tip the pop the pop over you get when you when you mouse over one of these headings you get like a drop down drop down that's the word I'm looking for where listed are all of the different possibilities and you can hide or show them and you can also solo them. I want, want it to work a bit like a, a door, uh, an audio workstation where you have this choice of like switching tracks on and off or muting them or unmuting them. But then also separate to that, you can solo a track and um, actually different software does this, different software and different devices as well, do this in different ways. Like sometimes soloing is just like a hard cancel for everything else. So if I, if I've like got a bunch of tracks muted and uh, some tracks playing and then I click solo on a track that's muted, now I hear that track but nothing else. Others will work differently, like Audacity does it in a weird way I think where if a track is muted and soloed, you just don't hear it, I think. I think that's right. But also in Audacity you can solo multiple tracks at the same time, which is strange, like you shouldn't be able to do that, I don't think. Um, anyway, so like you either want to see all of the old files or you don't want to see the old files at all. Maybe you want to see the old files and the ancient files. So like I think with on off toggles and with solo toggles you can kind of like get the get those controls easily. Like I haven't decided exactly how this is going to work. Like if you um, so if you have a whole bunch of files and like you you show some and you hide some and then you click solo on something probably what happens is you only see the files of that type whether or not they are on or off in other places but then what happens then if you want to add in another type. There's a couple of different ways to do this. You could either consider that the soloing changes the whole state. So what soloing really does is it switches everything else off and this one on. And if I then press on on another type, it'll it'll just add it to what is currently shown and I'll be able to see these two types. Um, but Another way to think about it is that like the soloed state is completely separate to the on off state and you like when you click solo it remembers everything that was on and off before and 
just focus on that one. And then when you click on on something else, it goes back to the on off state and removes them. I don't know. Anyway, like uh, I find this stuff interesting to think about and um, also probably kind of a distraction. Like it's not really probably going to be important at the end of the day, is it? Or is it? But like that's kind of why I'm enjoying making this stuff is like it's fun to um, to think about my operating system like how how do I want files to be organized and to sort of I guess impose that on the player uh, I guess yeah I don't know something to think about um, anyway so yeah like I said uh, I'm thinking about the file system and I don't know exactly where it's going to go and at the moment I think that I don't really possess the skills necessary to implement what I would like to, so I need to like teach myself, learn, learn some more, and that kind of stuff. So anyway, that's like, that's basically everything that is here in this. I mean, you can see like some of the problems I have, like with iteration, this is me trying to get to cursors and I still haven't got there yet. Like I'm not happy with what, like my current setup looks like this, where these ones here so this is your standard cursor this is you get this dot when you hover over something you can click this is for something that can be dragged this is for something that can be written into an input text input box this is for um, resizing vertically and this is for scrolling horizontally and vertically but yeah no I'm not happy with them I'll, I'll come back and have another look oh the other really big problem I've had with design is how to do toggle switches. This is some of me thinking about toggling and like, I haven't got there yet. So, you know, the, um, this is bore. this is interesting to nobody, but you know, I've been talking for more than an hour now, so I'm not expecting that anybody is watching this video, so it's fine. Um, you know, like the classic toggle box is a, is a square with either a cross or a tick in it and when something is toggled off the square is empty and when you click on it the the cross or the tick appears inside the the box um i think that now that has almost entirely been replaced by this uh this this kind of idea uh, i i don't know for certain but i imagine that this is an apple invention where like you you have a a representation of a physical slidey toggle switch and um, you know it has an on and an off state. I imagine that this is sort of a design of everyday things type idea of like physically representing what's going on and um, I guess it's probably an improvement on the classic box. I don't like them. I don't like them at all, which is maybe just me being difficult, but so there are bad implementations of them. It is not necessarily clear whether this is the off state or this is the off state. Just like having something to the right or the left doesn't indicate to me off or on. It requires additional, um, additional um, signals, most notably with color, right? Like, so this would be on, and then uh, that that would be off now that it the color changes as well. Um, that's a way of doing things, but I'm wary of like relying too much on just color. I think that like well, it's not just color, is it? I can't really explain why I don't like this kind of toggle, but I don't. Uh, so I've been trying to come up with my own version that'll work for the game and I haven't got it. I, maybe, maybe this is what the best there is, right? I mean, that's where, um, design has arrived at the moment. Um, oh yeah, I've already, this is the off and on state now. Um, yeah, um, hmm. I don't know. Um, like I was trying to make something where like 
the the button breaks when it's off, you know, to represent an electrical contact, which is either in contact or not. If it's broken, then it's off. That's what this thinking is. And then I went through a bunch of like trying to make that happen. But in the end, I don't really like it. Uh, there might be a way of doing it that I haven't quite got to yet, but I'm not using diagonal lines in my design at all. Well, a tiny, tiny bit, like, uh, I guess for like corner tags, I use diagonal lines and it's hard to see, um, but it's hard to see because this is something else that's over here. No, I don't want to. Yeah, this is a problem with Inkscape. Sometimes it just decides not to draw stuff. So, um, yeah, this is like, um, in your in the in your roll decks in your contact list, you can like flip over the card, and on the other side is going to be some more information about the person. So I've got like a little symbol that means you can flip it over. Uh, I, I haven't finalised this yet, so let's slow down. Anyway, so like I'm not really using diagonal lines. That's that's part of why this doesn't work. I was then like looking at something like this where you have the the dot either inside or outside the the, the circle and like it breaks like nah but it's getting complicated and weird and it doesn't really represent stuff and also this is just a bit phallic and odd and I don't, I don't like it um so anyway then I was sort of looking at ideas of like flipping the direction of it because I have a bunch of choice buttons which are flat on one end and curved at the other, like you could flip the direction or you could have the dot inside or outside, like this is a bit better than the previous one, but um, yeah, I don't know, and this here is what I'm currently on as a solution, like this is on and this is off, and if the button is inside the, sorry, if the dot is inside the background of the button, it's considered on and this is broken enough but I uh, still still not there uh, so I don't know I get too obsessed by this kind of things I should really just implement this like everybody else does probably um yeah well I mean it's been an hour and a half so no it hasn't it's been an hour and ten minutes it's probably time to stop um if you have watched all this way, I congratulate you. But also, like, maybe go and find something more interesting to do. You know, the these videos are principally here for me to talk through my thoughts and to help me <coughs> bring together all the things that I'm, I'm thinking about. Um, the principal reason that I make these videos is that it makes me stop and well it makes me reach a point where I'm happy to stop and then it makes me like assess what I've done and what I'm going to do next and um I knew that this was going to be long and rambling that's why I did the the warning at the beginning because like this this thing I'm working on is complicated. Like, it's the most gamey game that I've worked on so far. It's going to be puzzles. It's going to have a bunch of interlocking moving parts. And it's complicated. And so I've been working, building all of these systems. And at the same time as I'm working, building the systems, I'm thinking a lot about the world that this takes place in and the arc of the story and the things that I want to communicate. I want it to be about some very specific things, but not in too, um, too, not too flagrantly. Um, and yeah, like it's, it's a really complicated project. I, but I'm like, I'm happy with the progress that I'm making. I think it's interesting and I think it's going to be cool. I want to make a cool hacking game where you get to like mess around on a computer and do stuff. So yeah, if you if you watched this far, uh, thanks. Uh, I hope that it wasn't too boring, and um, if it helped you fall asleep, then that's cool. Um, but yeah, I think that's I think that's all I've got to say. 
Uh, thanks for watching and uh, talk to you again sometime soonish. Toodaloo.